I don't care at all for school. It sucks worse than getting grounded for months on end. It's like being in jail, so I'm just gonna stand out here all day and protest. No you won't, young lady. As your principal I'm warning you, if you don't go to class right now, you will be suspended for two weeks. Whatever. As if I care if you do. You'd be doing me a favor. Go ahead and suspend me, you're a big dumb liar who won't follow through. That's it. You are hereby suspended for three weeks. How dare you talk to me like that? You're 15, and you act like a spoiled little brat. Anything else? Yes. If I catch you anywhere near this school before the time is up, you will be expelled and arrested for trespassing. That girl needs to be in jail. You're in big trouble, Lena. Shut up, you little twerp. Ivy, go to your room and play. I'll sort your naughty sister out. As for you, Lana Marsh, you are in very big trouble. How dare you be naughty in school today? I wasn't naughty. Yes, you were. Your principal called and told me she had to suspend you for loitering in the hallway. You got two weeks for it. That's extremely naughty. Whatever. No it's not whatever. This behavior is very immature for a 15 year old. You need to grow up and start acting your age. Or what? If you keep acting in this pavyish way, I will make sure you have diapers on. For now, I'm grounding you for five weeks. Get to your room this minute. Why does Lana behave this way? So spoiled. I'm back after three weeks, but it should. Lana, shouldn't you be in class? I don't want to be in class. Perhaps you need detention? Detention? No. Well, young lady, you will receive detention for a week if you ditch classes. Go to class this instant. Ooh, a week. You think you're so big. That's it. You have just earned yourself three weeks of a detention. How dare you speak to me like that, three hours after school? 3 p.m. through 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. You will also serve time at weekends. 9 a.m. through 2 p.m. on Saturdays. And 11 a.m. through 4 p.m. on Sundays. Naughty girl. You can't seriously expect me to serve detention over the weekends. That's unfair. Don't do the crime if you can do the time. I'm going to just sit here and amuse myself. Oh no you're not. You're going to go and tidy your room. Why? Because it's obscenely messy, and you're very naughty to leave it like that. I'm a teenager. You're not acting like one though. You're acting like a little child. If that's how you're going to act, that's how you're going to be treated. So? No it's not so. Go and tidy your room. Right now. I'll put you in timeout if you don't. Timeout? I'm not five. Well then, stop acting like it and do as you're told. No. That's it. I'm not putting up with this childish behavior any longer. You are to go and sit on the stairs for five minutes. Naughty little girl. I hate school so much, I'm gonna drop out. Oh no you're not. Lana Jennifer Marsh, I will not have my daughter dropping out of school. 
you're already on your final warning from the school. All that'll happen if I miss one more day unlawfully as I'll be expelled. Exactly. And that will not do. If you get expelled, you'll be grounded for life. I won't have it. So you're going to school until you're 18, and then you can stop going. Mom. I'm 15 years old. I don't need school. Lena, you are making a very bad choice that will affect your life very poorly if you drop out of school before you even finish. I don't want my daughter achieving nothing in life. What do you suggest? I suggest you keep attending classes until you graduate. And snapping out of this immature behavior. It is not the way a 15-year-old should act. You are supposed to be in ninth grade for Pete's sake. What does Pete have to do with it? Nothing, but if. Don't take his name in vain then. For goodness sake just grow up and learn to be a teenager. You are acting like a very little child, and how dare you interrupt me. That's very rude and disrespectful. You are a very naughty girl. Don't talk to me like I'm five years old. Lena, you behave like a baby all the time. That's no way for a high school freshman who is soon to be a sophomore to behave. You either stop behaving like it and grow up, or I will be diapering you. You can't put diapers on me. I can, and will. Just for that, come with me, and I will get you changed. Clean you up and put your diaper on. Where is my naughty daughter? I have words to be giving her. That's funny, Mom. How long did it take you to come up with that one? Lena Jennifer Marsh. You are 15 years old, and should know how very childish it is to spew out these sarcastic one-liners all the time. It isn't going to work on me. I think it works very well all the time, and you are just in denial. That is very immature, and naughty of you. How dare you talk to me that way? If this immature behavior doesn't stop, I will start treating you like the little baby you act, meaning I will put you in nappies, feed you from a bottle and put you to bed at 5 every afternoon. It has gone too far. What? Your mondo weirdo behavior? I agree. Stop it before I have you committed to an asylum. That's it! If you insist on acting like a baby, then I will start treating you like one. From this day on, you are going to have nappies on and be changed whenever you need it, so come and put your nappy on. So I'm in nappies for my over-the-top immaturity. Whatever. You don't care that your nappies are on, as a punishment for acting like a baby do you? Nope, it's happened lots of times. I quite enjoy it. You're not supposed to enjoy it. You naughty girl. Or should I say naughty baby? I know, but I do. You are only wearing them until your punishment is over. And no later. I'll wear them after this if I want to. You will not. I will. If you do, you'll have to find someone else to change them, because I certainly won't be. Speaking of which, it's time to change your nappy. I'll handle this. Who are you? I'm Serena. I'm a special nanny that deals with cases like this. I'll look after her. Everything from changing her nappers to putting her to bed at night. She's bugging me to let her keep them on after her. That's fine by me. She can stay in nappers after her punishment. I'll keep changing her. Fair enough. All right, Lana. Let's go and change your nappy. Lena's later than usual, and she's not answering her phone. Mom, I'm no I'm home later than usual and I didn't answer my phone. I'm sorry. About that. What happened to answering your phone? The little bastard died as I went to answer it. That's reason enough, but there's no need for language like that is there. You're right, Mom. 
I apologize. That's okay. Off you go and plug your phone in. Yes, mom. There goes my daughter. Definitely a young lady to be very proud of. I love her so much. She has accomplished a lot in 15 years. I thought I was 16. No, sweetheart. You were born in 2002, not 2001. It's currently 2017, and that makes you 15. You still have a year before you turn 16. Of course. Silly me. I feel like I'm 13 again. But I'm a year 10 at this time. It happens to the best of us, love. It is good to be back, as that hiatus was just too long. There goes my sister. Up to her old tricks again. Honey Bunch, if you're starting back up with your naughty shenanigans, I'm telling mom. Fifteen-year-olds don't chat out their little sisters. They do if their little sisters are being naughty. And you, little madam, are being naughty. I'm not being naughty. Yes you are. You are trying to spoil this premiere episode, and that's very naughty. No it isn't. Yes it is. And you are going the right way for a nappy being put on you. Stop it. A nappy? Who's going to put one of those on me? I am. But first, you're grounded for two weeks. How dare you be so naughty. And now, you are coming up to your room, as it's time to put a nappy on you. Naughty girl. Maybe spending two weeks getting her nappies changed on top of being grounded will teach her to behave. That's me already for today's events. Lana, I have some bad news. What's the bad news? Honey Bunch has run away due to an upsetting day she had at school. Oh no, the poor little dear. She's tried so hard to be good, and it's causing her grief. That's not right. Kimberly will be here looking for her in a minute. Speaking of, here she is now, the poor little soul. Honey Bunch, sweetie, what have the kids been saying? They've been calling me a goody two-shoes and a busybody. Here she is. Honey Bunch, come here. I'm not in trouble, am I? Of course not, sweetheart. You have tried so hard to be good over the past week that both mom and I think you deserve a reward. But first, I sense my baby sister needs comforting. I don't want my efforts at good behavior to go to waste. They haven't gone to waste at all, my sweet little sister. Even your teacher told mom you were a little sweetheart today. I saw you out there earlier during my lunch break. You were trying to console another child's feelings after he got bullied. That warmed my heart. You should be proud of yourself. Thanks, Lena. Come on, sweetie. You've had a very difficult day. Let's get you home. It has been a pleasure to see you doing good for a change. Poor little dear. Oh my word. It's so hot. I cannot bear it. Lana, if you're too hot, then why not go and change into something cooler? Why didn't I think of that? Because you're a silly sausage. I humbly admit I'm a silly sausage who should join the circus. I never said anything about you joining the circus. I know you didn't, Mom. I did. My 15-year-old daughter is a funny girl. Although, I was very naughty when I was little. Oh Lana. That's not worth remembering. You're right. I mean I'm going to be 16 soon, right? Correct. You're going into year 11 in September, and you turn 16 in October. 2001. What a great year to have been born, sweet 16. What's going to happen?
given how very hot it's been lately. A relaxing day in is what everybody needs. That, I couldn't agree more with. Unfortunately for some, it's not an option, as they have to run after their little ones. Those naughty children. Let me guess, Kimberly's running after Honey Bunch again? You're wrong there, sweetheart. Lucy's running after Daisy. The naughty little tyke won't take her bath. Daisy, no. You're being very naughty already. You need your bath. The marshes don't need to get involved. I don't want a bath. I don't care if you want one or not. I'm your big sister, you have to do as I say. Besides, while I'm looking after you, what I say goes. You are going in the bath when we get in. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Mum and Dad are counting on me to make sure you're clean, fed, watered, and well looked after. That means you'll be going to bed once out of the bath. Daisy, you should do as your sister says. She does it because she cares. On top of all that, I do this because I love you. So stop misbehaving and come home for your bath. You're a very naughty girl. What a naughty girl she is. Cheeky little monkey. Ivy, come on upstairs please. It's time to change you. Change me? Yes, change you. You're having nappies on. Nappies? Lena, why are you putting nappies on me? Because you need them on. So, it's time to put your nappy on, right now. That's Ivy in nappies. I'll change her whenever she needs it. You didn't have a reason for putting me in nappies. Ivy, you know the rules. As your babysitter, it's up to me how things work, and I say you have to have nappies on. And you're going to wear them. But. Don't be naughty Ivy. Just do as you're told. I. Need a nappy change. Come on, let's go and change your nappy. Who do they think they are? Giving me a triple load of coursework to do before school starts again. What a freaking waste. Not to mention the child abuse they're committing. They just don't care. Lana, I noticed that triple load of coursework on your desk. Surely the school don't expect you to waste your whole summer working on it. They do I'm afraid. And it's got me so stressed out I can't concentrate. That's it. I say you need to unwind. Put it aside and take a long break. Too much stress can cause health problems. I don't want you to suffer a heart attack or a stroke. They'll see it as a slack off and set me a fourth load. Okay, sweetheart. You go up to bed, and I'll call the school about this ridiculous rule about coursework intensifying for what they see as slacking off. Thanks, Mom. Lana, you're my daughter. I love you too much to let anything so horrible happen to you. Off you go and get comfortable. What's this I'm hearing about my poor sister being set a triple load of coursework? It's true, Ivy. The worst thing is it's not everyone in her class who got the dreadful triple load. It's just her, and I for one am furious with her school about this. Why did they do this to her? Apparently, they consider stepping out for just five minutes to be slacking off. And that's why she received a triple load. Load of bull if you ask me. I should go up and see her. Okay, sweetie. She is under a lot of stress over this, so I sent her to bed. If she's awake, I know she'll be glad to see you. Got it. I need to find Lana a new school. Mainstream is just too stressful for her.
That naughty girl is so grounded. How dare she stay out past or curfew and not phone me? She had better have a damn good explanation. I'm home. And it's past your curfew. You had better have a damn good explanation. I was ambushed by thugs who were trying to mug me. Aha. Uh -huh. Now I know you're telling me a downright fib. How dare you? How can you tell? The fact you said it with a straight face and had made it home unscathed. You'd be in tears and all beaten up if that were the case. The hospital would have called. And you have your phone with you at all times. They stole it from me. Incoming call from Holly Daniels. Aha. Uh -huh. Another lie. I've had enough of this. You're grounded for three weeks. How dare you come home past your curfew and spout such lies. Get to bed at once. This is not how I expect my teenage daughter to behave. I have an adorable baby sister who is a year old. So cute. Lana, are you alright down here? I most definitely am, Mom. How's little Ivy? She's absolutely fine. Just got her down for her nap. That's good. We don't want a cranky baby. No we certainly don't. What are you up to anyway? I'm just having a thinking session. Nothing naughty, I promise. Let's hope you aren't naughty full stop. Don't worry. I won't be. Gotta go. There goes my daughter. She's such a good girl. I'm back. So I see. Did you wash your hands? Oh, I washed my hands all right. Lana, I know you're lying to me by the tone of your voice. Go and wash your hands. But I already washed them. Don't lie to me, Lana. Just do as you're told. But my hands are clean. No, they're filthy. Go and wash them this instant. You're being naughty. I'm not being naughty. Lana, lying to me about washing your hands and refusing to go and wash them is naughty. I'll get cross if you don't stop it. Go and wash your hands. Now. But I did wash my hands. Lana Jennifer Marsh, your hands are extremely dirty, and you've been lying to me about washing them for the last half hour. That's very naughty. I will not tolerate it. But. No buts. You will do as you're told. Go and wash your hands, right now. You naughty girl. No. They're clean. That's it. You are grounded for two weeks. How dare you give me a hard time about washing your hands. That's very naughty. I am taking you up to that bathroom, and you are going to wash those dirty hands, right now. Bad girl. Year 11. A very late start to the new school year, Lena. I'm in Form 11X. Off I go. I believe my class are in music now. It's this way. Oh no you don't, Miss Marsh. You got detention for a week. How dare you be three weeks late back. I apologize for that, Mrs. Dexter. I have a tardy form fully signed and ready to hand in. I don't wish to hear any excuses from anybody in my tutor group. You will serve your detentions. Naughty girl. Yes, Mrs. Dexter. Can I go to class now please? You had better. And don't let me catch you dawdling again. Yes, Mrs. Dexter. Naughty little girl. What a very fun time this, is. Ivy, I. That, 
is a very naughty little girl. Who's naughty? You're naughty, Ivy. No, I'm not. You are a very naughty girl for standing on the sofa, yet again after constantly being warned of the dangers. Get down now, or, you're grounded. You cannot ground me. You're not my mother. No, but I am your sister, and the one who is in charge while mum's out. I can, and will ground you if you don't do as I say. I'll just stay up here. In that case, Missy, you're grounded for two weeks. You are being a very naughty girl today. Get down, and go straight to your room. Now. I'm not going to my room. Ivy, you know perfectly well you have to go to your room if you've been naughty. You have been very naughty, and I'm telling you. Go to your room, right now. That felt good. Have you messed yourself? Naughty girl. Looks like I'll have to put a nappy on you. And then it's off to bed for you. Wow, 16 at last. That was only a month ago, but it was great. It certainly was, Lena. That was the biggest sweet 16 bash the neighborhood had ever seen. Thanks, Ivy. You're always very sweet with your words. But then, I've always been sweet with my words. Not if you're naughty you're not. Oh please. I'm only 8. I'm bound to be naughty sometimes. Now girls, don't argue. Anyway, it's time Ivy was in bed. But it's only 7 o'clock, and I'm not tired. Ivy Marsh, you do not whine about going to bed. That's very naughty, and I will not tolerate it. What about Lana? Lana is 16, and is therefore old enough to stay up later. You are only 8, and that's too young to choose when you go to bed. I will ground you if you don't stop being naughty. Ivy, if you don't want to be grounded, you should do as you are told and go up to bed. You're being naughty. But I don't want to. You're being very naughty tonight, and I will not have it. You are grounded for two weeks. How dare you be naughty at your bedtime? It's not fair. It is so fair, Missy. You have been told it's time for bed, and you're disobeying Mom over it. That's very naughty, and you know that. You deserve to be grounded. If Dad was still here. He'd agree with the set bedtime, and the punishments handed out for being naughty about it. Unfortunately for all of us, he passed away shortly after you were born, so he's not here. I'll tell you one thing though. He's watching over us from heaven, and he's not pleased his 8-year-old daughter is being naughty at her bedtime. You're going to bed, right now, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Why, that very naughty sister of mine. Christmas is very nearly here. I can't wait. Neither can I, my darling little sister. You so sweet, and I so excited. I love you, sweet Lana sister. I love you too, my sweet little Ivy Pop. Is mum here at all? I'm right here, my sweet little daughter. We were just conveying our season's greetings to the audience. And a very good thing too. And the right thing to do at this time of year. It certainly is. Let's have a present each. Now. Now, Ivy. That's not how it works. No presents until Christmas Day. Who's being naughty trying to get an early present? Go on, up to your room. Naughty girl. Hello, Nikita. 
Hey, Lena. Aren't you freezing out here in just your normal clothes? Not really. Are you? Yeah, that's why I'm on my way home to sit by the fire. I should probably get home too. That's much better. Nice and warm. Hey, Lana. Hey, Ivy. What can I do for? It's my bedtime now. So it is. Come on, let's go and get you into a nappy and your pajamas, and then it's in a bed. Merry Christmas from everyone in the Marsh family. See you in episode 21, which is due very soon. Here we are, Terry. Welcome to my home. It's lovely. What if your mum and sister don't like me? Don't worry, babes. They'll like you. My sister thinks it's corny, but then, she's only nine, so it's to be expected. I see. Just like my eight-year-old brother. Here they are now. Hello there, Terry. I'm Lano's mom, Susan. It's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too, Susan. You too, little one. You must be Lana's sister. I am indeed. My name's Ivy. Bit old for my sister, aren't you? Ivy, that's very naughty. Don't be so rude. I'm not that much older than Lana. I'm only 20. As I recall being told, she's 16. Four years younger. She turned 16 in October. But that's not important. What's important is your happiness. And I can see you're both happy. I'm sorry I was rude to you, Terry. That's okay, Ivy. My brother acted the same way towards your sister. I see. Oh yes. I love standing where I can see what's going on. Bad Ivy. What? You heard me. I said bad Ivy. Bad? What bad? You're standing on the table again, and that is a very naughty thing to do. That's why you're bad. No, I'm not bad. You are very bad indeed. Get off the table. Now. Happy now? No. I'm not happy. I got off the table, didn't I? Yeah. But you are still being naughty. How dare you switch to standing on the sofa? Sit down, or get off the sofa. No I won't. For goodness sake Ivy. You are naughty every time I babysit you, and I am tired of it. You are 8 years old, but you act like you're at least 6 years younger. So? No it's not so. If you're going to act like a baby, then you're going to be treated like one. It'll be nappies for you. Young lady. No way. I'm not wearing nappies. Yes you are, and there's no choice in the matter either. So, I'll be putting a nappy on you, right now. And you can go to bed. This isn't fair. It is so fair. What's not fair is that you behave like a naughty little baby every time I babysit you. That's why you have that nappy on. I will change you when you need it. And you are having nappies on, every time I babysit you from now on. I will be speaking to mum about it. So unfair. Enough. Naughty little girl being such a big baby. I need this after all that. This nappy is unnecessary. That did it. Time to change Ivy's nappy. I can't believe it's been 4 years already. I'm 20 years old, and it is a lovely day. Lena. Yes Ivy? What is it? 
I wonder if you can help over there. What's going on? Is some naughty child causing a ruckus? Sure. Something like that I suppose. Ivy, I remind you I'm all grown up now, and if nothing but a made up fight, scuffle or petty squabble is happening over there, I won't be best pleased, so tell me the truth. What's going on over there? Alright I admit it. Nothing is happening over there. It's just a fib. For goodness sake Ivy. Fibbing to me about trouble over in the playground? You're 12 years old now, and should know how childish it is to make up lies. I am a child. Actually, at your age you're practically a teenager. If you won't stop behaving like a young child, then I'll take you home and put you to bed. Naughty little child. What a makeover that was, and well worth it. I love this new look. Out with that boring old scruffy teenage look. And hello to this new look of a 20-year-old Lana. Hi. Is your name Lana Marsh? Yes, sweet little girl. My name is Alana Marsh. And you must be the O'Connor's daughter Louise. I am indeed the O'Connor's daughter Louise. I never knew you were such a looker. Oh Hugh, you shouldn't be hitting on me. Your wife is standing next to you. Your daughter, right in front of you, and besides, I have a boyfriend. You behave yourself, down boy. You're a very naughty boy. I need to get home to my Terry. See you later. She's only a year younger than me, and she's very pretty. No wonder why all the boys want to go out with her. Hugh, you naughty boy. Our daughter needs better examples than that. Now remember, Ivy. I'm fostering you because mom can't handle your behavior right now. You're lucky I stepped in because they were going to place you with strangers. Also, as your legal guardian, it's down to me what punishments your bad behavior gets from this point on. What about Terry? Isn't he helping you to care for me? Yes he is, but he's at work at this moment. Also, I'm placing a 5.30 curfew every evening. And I don't want to hear any complaining about it. What if I came back past my curfew? You'd be grounded, that's what. As will you be if you swear, mess up your room, stand on the furniture, are rude in any way. To me, Terry, or anyone, refuse to have baths and go to bed when told, bunk off school, steal, bully, or do anything naughty in general. I understand. Wouldn't it have been better just to say if I'm naughty in any way? I'll be grounded. Good point. Well, make yourself at home. I'll serve lunch when it's ready. One more thing. What's that, sweetie? You never told me when my bedtime is. Of course I didn't. How silly of me. Your bedtime will be 8.30 on school nights, and 9.30 at weekends, earlier if you're naughty. Fair enough. Oh, and we have nappies here. You will wear them if you wet or mess yourself on top of being grounded. In fact, I'll be putting one on you tonight. Right. Lunch is at 1. So I must get on. Make yourself at home. I got to go to the toilet. Ivy? Where are you? I was upstairs using the toilet. a girl. Lunch is ready. Off you go and eat before it goes cold. There goes a good girl. Thanks Lena. That was delicious. You're more than welcome, sweetie. I'm pleased you enjoyed it. I was wondering. Could you put a nappy on me? What? You want me to put a nappy on you? Now? Yes. Can you put one on me please? I could, but for what reason? You haven't done anything to warrant it.
Know this, I shall be telling your mother about your naughty behavior. Are you some kind of retard or something? Ivy Marsh. How many times have we told you never to use that word? 53 by my count, Lana. You call your mother by her first name. You are so naughty. Lana is my sister, you stupid pig. How dare you let me catch using that horrible R word for the 54th time, and then insult your poor teacher. You are a very naughty girl. Why is Ivy in your care? She was constantly naughty at home and our mom couldn't handle her, so I agreed to take her into my care. And Ivy, you'll be grounded for two months if you don't apologize this instant. Do it, and say it like you mean it. Sorry for what? Being a normal kid. How can you call it normal behavior, when you're 12 years old? Because it is. That's it. You are now grounded for two months. How dare you act like such a little breath? Twelve-year-olds don't behave this way. You are behaving like a two-year-old. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. It'll be nappies for you, Missy. No. I'm afraid so. If you act like a baby then I'll treat you like one. You are going to have a nappy on, when we get in. No way. Yes way. And your nappies will stay on, until you learn not to act like a baby anymore. So come on. Home. Nappy. Now. I didn't know putting nappies on her was an option. Finally, I get some time to myself. Ivy's at school and has promised to behave. I need some me time. You certainly do, Lana. Ivy has kept you very busy lately. Indeed. She means well most of the time. Changing her nappies can be a challenge. Back it up here. Ivy's 12 years old. Why are you putting nappies on her? She often acts like a baby, so I put them on her for discipline. Well, that's my school day over as I'm on half days at a current time. Okay, sweetheart. Why not go home and lay down? I'll be there in a few minutes to change you okay. Some alone time that was. Never mind. I need to get home and change Ivy's nappy. Ivy, I have to ask you something, and no lies please. Did you attack another child today? No, Lana. I did no such thing. Are you lying to me? Lying to you? Certainly not. Then perhaps you can explain to me why you were sent home with an official warning from the board saying you'll be expelled if you're caught bullying again? But Lana, I didn't bully anyone. Honest. I said no lies. If you didn't bully anyone, then why did they give you an official expulsion warning? They can't expel me over nothing. That's unfair. I've had enough of this Ivy. You're grounded. How dare you bully another child, come home with an official warning of expulsion, and lie to me about it. But Lena. No buts. You have been a very naughty girl, and I am furious with you. Go to your room, right now. I'll be up in a minute to put you to bed. Okay, now to get the bits I came to get. Excuse me, are you Lana Marsh? Yes, sir. I'm Lana Marsh. Paul Fredrickson, general manager of the supermarket. What can we help you with today? I just came to do a bit of food shopping. Excellent. You're hired. I'm hired? Just to come and shop here? No, silly. You're hired. To work here. I'm giving you a job. You're giving me a job? Just like that? 
This is unexpected. That's right. Can you start next Monday? Yes. I can start the next Monday. Excellent. If you come in at, say, 9.30, and we'll induct you into the Super Savers family. 9.30 next Monday. Gotcha. Excellent. See you next Monday at 9.30 for your induction. Happy shopping. What a bizarre turn of events. I came to do a small shop, and I'm given a job here, on the spot. Did not expect that. Those of you watching at home, what do you think about this? Terry wants me to meet him here. I wonder why that is. I couldn't even begin to guess at what it might be. Lana, my honey. You waited. That's a good girl. Oh you. Jesting me like that. Oh my word. What are you doing? Lana Jennifer Marsh. I love you with all my heart. I will do anything for you. Will you marry me, and make me the happiest man on this earth? Oh Terry. This is the happiest moment of my life. Of course I'll marry you. I love you so much. Well, it looks like congratulations are in order. Thank you, Ivy. Come here. My sister-in-law to be is so adorable. Terry. Len is my sister, and she will always have my love and support. You are such a sweetie. That's why I'm asking you to be my bridesmaid. I am so honored, Lena. I promise I won't let you down. I know you won't. That was a lucky escape. I never thought. You're in trouble now, Lena. Naughty Lena. Get lost, you little wart. I heard that, Lana Jennifer Marsh. You are grounded for three weeks. Why? For getting into trouble with the police, lying to me about it, and calling your little sister that unkind name. How dare you? Trouble with the police? Don't give me that rubbish. You got arrested at school for punching another child, spent the day in jail and have just been brought home in the back of a police car. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't send you to bed. It's too early. Not for you it isn't. You have been a very naughty girl. Get straight to bed, and no arguments about it either. Ivy's coming home today. Should be any minute now. Here she is, Mom. Ivy has been returned to her home. Welcome home, Ivy. I've missed you so much. Go on, sweetie. I've missed you too, Mom. And I'm sorry for my naughty behavior before you sent me with Lana. Oh, Ivy. Let's just let bygones be bygones. I'm so happy to have you home. And I'm so happy to be home. I owe you my most sincere thanks, Lana. You taught me how to be better behaved. I am nearly 13 after all. You're welcome, sweetie. It has been a pleasure having you. Terry and I have loved it, and are very proud of you. As am I, sweetheart. All the time you were with them, they've been taking it in turns to make calls updating me on your progress. You deserve the spot as bridesmaid at the wedding. I can't think of anyone better. You've earned it. I fully agree with Lana. You truly deserve it. Another thing she deserves as much as you do. Mom, it's time to gather on her first day back home. I check in on you both later. Expect to call around 8 tonight. And Ivy, if you need my advice on anything, I'm always there for you. Thanks again, Lana. I love you. I love you too, 
My darling little sister, talk to you both later. Talk to you later, Lena. And thanks from me too. Anytime. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go and get you unpacked and settled back in. What a lovely day. Too lovely to be working. But hey, at least I work in this very nice, happy place. I still remember just walking in here and being hired on the spot. Hey, Lana. Hello, Ivy. My dear sweet little sister. How are you? I'm very well thanks, brilliant big sister. How are you? I too, am very well thanks, my humble little honeybee. How's mom? Mom's fine. She's just really busy at this point in time. Excuse me. What did you do that for? The better question is, what were you doing with these items in your pocket? The evidence looks conclusive to me. This naughty boy was stealing all this stuff. No, it's not like that. Then, kindly explain why all this stuff dropped out from under your jacket when I stopped you. You filthy shoplifters are all alike. I'm calling the police, and you mister, are going to jail. Officer, you arrived just on time. We just caught this naughty boy shoplifting. Really? Yes, all the evidence you need is on the floor. Arrest him at once. Young man, you are under arrest for shoplifting. You do not have to say anything. Anything you do say can, and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to remain silent, and the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, then the court will appoint one to you. Do you understand these rights? I do. I don't want to see you anywhere near this store again. Rotten scum. Ivy, thank you for catching that naughty boy. I'll see you get a reward for this. You deserve it. Terry should be down any minute. He says made an important decision as to who takes whose name when we get married. Ah, Lana, babe, there you are. Yes, baby boy. Here I am. So, what did you decide? Well, I thought, as there are already so many of us in the Bull family, I'd like to take your family name. You want to become Mr. Marsh? Yes, babes. I do. Very much so. Terry. I think that's a lovely idea. Mr. Terry Marsh. It has a nice ring to it. It does, doesn't it? I'm doing this gladly. Is there something you have to tell me, babes? How would you like to be a father? A father? Babes, I'd love to be a father. That'll be awesome. I'm glad you think so because in nine months, you're going to be a father. I'm pregnant. Woohoo. Babes, that's excellent news. We're going to be parents. We are starting a family of our own. We have to tell everyone the good news. Okay, so we've got the nursery ready for the baby. It's time to start preparations for the wedding. We do indeed, so it is crucial that we agree on everything, as far as the wedding's concerned. I believe that my choice of bridesmaid was a good one. Ivy can do it. I believe in her. I'll ask my brother Tony to be my best man. Tony? Your big brother? Excellent choice. The venue? I've been thinking we should have the ceremony at the park. There's loads of space for us and our guests as the reception at our favorite restaurant. Exactly what I was thinking too. 
Who should we get to perform the ceremony? That's easy. My dad's an ordained minister. I'll ask him. That's a fantastic choice. I know he'll be pleased to perform our wedding. Caterers? Sweetheart, the staff and waiters at the restaurant will be our caterers. Okay. Stupid question. Of course they will. Music? I think you should choose the music you walk down the aisle to. I'd like to down the aisle to Yellow Carousel. Yellow Carousel it is. As for the music at the reception, our first dance will be to Hey Baby by DJ Otzi, and then a mix of classic pop and classical music. I fully agree with that. As for the date, I think we can time it in with the birth of our baby. So do I once we know when the due date is. We'll know that soon enough. We just got back from the scan, and found out we have twins on the way, a son and a daughter. We need names for them. Any ideas of names for our daughter? Actually, now that you mention it, as a child, I always wanted a daughter of my own, and swore to myself that if I did have a daughter one day, I'd name her Poppy. Poppy? What a pretty name. We'll name our daughter Poppy. As for me, I always wanted a son growing up, and swore to myself that if I had a son one day, I'd name him Sebastian. We'll name our son Sebastian. That's that sorted. We need two separate sides of the nursery. Blue for Sebastian, and pink for Poppy. That can be arranged, my golden beauty. We need everyone to know we have a set of twins on the way. All rise for the bride. All sit. Dearly beloved, we are here today to witness the union of Mr. Terry Bull and Miss Lana Marsh in holy matrimony. Do you, Terence Adam Bull, take Lana Jennifer Marsh to be your wife? To have and hold? To love and cherish? In sickness, and in health? Till death do you part? I do. I do. I, Kendra Victoria Marsh do give my daughter, Lana Jennifer Marsh to Terence Adam Bull, as his lawfully wedded wife. So proud, I am. If anyone knows of any reason why these two should not be legally joined together, let them speak now, or forever hold their peace, by the power bestowed upon me. I pronounce you man and wife. Congratulations. You may now kiss your bride. I love you, sweetie pie. I love you too, baby. My daughter-in-law is so beautiful. And my son-in-law is handsome. Meet the new Mr. and Mrs. Marsh. And there's my flower girl. You did a good job, sweetie. Thanks, Lana. No, thank you. Come here you. Good luck with your lives, and with your kids. Thank you, little sweetie. And there's the best bridesmaid I could appoint. Thank you, Ivy. It was my pleasure, Lana. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. Poppy Grace Marsh, you are such a little angel. Bless you. Sebastian Crown Marsh, you are such a little rocker. That is little man. You know, Terry, we have two very adorable children. I agree with you there, honey, a handsome little boy. And a beautiful little girl. All together, we make a perfect little family. We certainly do, my dear wife. The kids have an amazing mother. And an equally amazing father. I'm so proud of our little family. As am I our son and daughter are so very cute. 
and they're very lucky to have two very loving parents. They are indeed. Lana? Terry? Anyone in? We're right here, Ivy. We were just getting the twins up. And here they are. Ivy, it gives us great pleasure to introduce you to your new nephew Sebastian, and your new niece Poppy. Oh they're so cute. Hello, Sebastian and Poppy. I'm your auntie Ivy. Oh I just love you to bits. That's just the reaction we were hoping for. Terry. Ivy's Seb and Pop's auntie. Of course she loves them. I adore my nephew and niece. If you ever need extra help, I'd be very happy to pitch in. We know you would, sweetie. We're very grateful for the offer, but we want you to focus on the last bit of your childhood. You'll be a teenager before long. Besides, there's plenty of time for your help later. We're very proud of you, sweetheart. I do believe I'll climb up on here. That's better. Poppy, what are you doing? Get down now. I would, but that would be boring. You could join me. I'd rather not. I'm telling on you. Poppy and Sebastian, don't have another petty squabble please. What? Oh, I see. Poppy's being naughty again is she? Afraid so. Okay, Sebastian. Off you go now, there's a good boy. I'll deal with your naughty sister. I'm not being naughty. Poppy, you are being a very naughty girl. You know standing on furniture is forbidden, due to the danger it can cause. Get down from there, right now. No. Excuse me, Missy. But I am your mother, and you do not speak to me like that. How dare you? I will put you to bed if you don't stop misbehaving. Yeah, sure you will. Lana. Sebastian sent me down. Says you could use some help disciplining Poppy. I'd appreciate it, Ivy. Since Terry went back to work from his break, she's been giving me lots of trouble. I can see that. You get down from there this instant, Missy. What authority do you have over me? None, as you're not my mother. No, but I am your mother's sister, which makes me your auntie, and I am helping her out. So, you do not give me any of that lip, or disobey me. Get down from there. Now. What if I don't listen? Then I will put you to bed myself. You are a very naughty girl. Shove off. Oh, you naughty girl. How dare you use such language. I will not raise my daughter to be a foul-mouthed, smart-talking little breath. Stop it now. Thank you. Don't expect your behavior to go unpunished. You are going straight to bed for your behavior today. You are being very naughty, and we are not tolerating it. But first... It's way past time to change your nappy. I'm a tiny bit bored. Time for a little fun. That's better. Now it's... Poppy, what are you doing? Get down from there, right now. Why? I'm only having fun. Well I can tell you for certain that being naughty is no fun at all. Mom, I'm not being naughty. Excuse me, Missy, but it's very naughty to stand on furniture. You are putting yourself in danger of falling and hurting yourself really badly. Get down, right now. But, Mom... No buts, Poppy. You get down from there this instant, otherwise you will go to bed. 
naughty girl. You will get off the sofa this instant, little missy. No, I won't if you don't say please. Excuse us, but we are your parents, and you have to do as we say. That means you get down, right now. You're being very naughty. Well, I'm not coming down, so there. Looks like you'll be going to bed then, doesn't it? You are being very rude, disrespectful and naughty. It's off to bed for you. Now. Oh no. Oh yes, and look at me when I'm talking to you. Bad girl. Oh. Shoot. I'll give you oh shoot missy. You are very naughty to stand on the sofa, disobey your parents and then treat them this way. Ivy, I can't see. Stop right there, you naughty girl. I am your auntie, so you will address me as Auntie Ivy. You are going to bed, and you don't have a choice. Who's going to put me there? You? You got another one right. I am putting you to bed, right now. How dare you behave this way, and expect to get away with it? This is none of your business. I'm not your daughter. No, but you are my niece, my very naughty little niece. And I'll think you'll benefit from the reminder that I'm helping your parents to bring you and Sebastian up. So you will do well to remember that disciplining you is as much my business as it is theirs. So, you are coming with me, as I am putting you to bed. Now. I'm so grateful Ivy decided to move in and help us. So am I. Remember, she does it out of love. And because she wants to, I also do this, in return for the free full-time accommodation you granted me. Ivy, your family. We wouldn't dream of charging you for rent. I adore those kids, and I know Poppy didn't mean to behave the way she did. Let's forget about it now. What's done is done. For now though, we want you to call it tonight. Off you go and get ready for bed. I'll bring your dinner up. Thank you. I do need it. She'd make a great mother one of these days. She would. For now though, she's only 17, and studying for her A-level exams. I best get her dinner ready. Poppy. Sweetheart, this silence isn't like you. Are you feeling okay? I'm fine, thanks, Mom. Why are you being so quiet? You're usually playing with Sebastian. Speaking of Sebastian, where is he? He's outside with Dad and Andy Ivy, helping them tend the garden. That's all fine and good, but I'm worried about you. Mom, honestly, I do appreciate your concern, but there's no need. I'm fine. Poppy, you're my daughter. I love you very much and I will worry about you, even if I don't need to. Why not amuse yourself? I love you too, Mom. I just want to sit here quietly. Sweetie, wouldn't you rather do something fun? Might I convince you to help me in the kitchen? I could use a pair of extra hands. Okay. I'll come and help. It's very quiet around here. I wonder what's going on? Hey, Poppy. Hi, Sebastian. I was just wondering why it's so quiet. Oh, then it must be time for some noise. Sebastian, that's a very scheming look. What are you going to do? Since you asked. Ow, you pinched me. What did you do that for? You wanted some noise, so you got it. I didn't say I wanted. What the hell is going on here? Andy Ivy, Sebastian, just, pinched me. Pinched you, did he? Yes he did. It hurts like heck. Come here, right now, mister. Huh? Well, be honest with me, mister. Did you just pinch your sister? Can you repeat the question? Poppy, my sweet little angel. What's the matter? Sebastian pinched me. You did what, young man? She thinks I pinched her. I don't think you pinched me, Sebastian. I know you did. But I didn't. So, these pinch marks on her arm didn't come from you? Of course not. I never heard my sister like that. Well then, perhaps you'd like to explain why your fingerprints are all down her arm? Uh. 
No, it's not a mister. How many times have we told you no pinching? Four. Well, it looks like that wasn't enough. How dare you ignore our warnings and pinch your sister anyway? You are a very naughty boy. Get up to your room right now, mister. But first, apologize to your sister. But. Now. I'd never do that to you. I'm sorry, Poppy. Thank you, Sebastian. Poppy, sweetie, come with me. I've got just the thing to make you feel better. As for you, mister, I am taking you upstairs and putting you straight to bed. You're a very naughty boy. Your father will hear about this. Here we are again, getting a standing ovation. We know we shouldn't be standing on the sofa in the armchair, but we are. Poppy. Sebastian. I'm disappointed that you're standing on the furniture again. Please use the armchair and the sofa for their intended purpose. To lounge on, not to climb over. We'd rather not, Dad. Oh, you two are slightly naughty to do this again. Mom's not here, and nor is Auntie Ivy. That's where you're both wrong, because I am here. And I'm telling you to get down from that armchair, Sebastian, and you, Poppy. We'll get down from that sofa. Now. Oh, will we? You will if you don't want to go to bed for being naughty again. The pair of you. But we've only been slightly naughty. No. You are both being very naughty. Standing on the furniture again, after being constantly warned not to. Down. Now. Or bed. We don't want to calm down. Then you can both go to bed for your naughty behavior. I am taking you upstairs and putting you to bed. Naughty children. I'm in trouble now. I just know it. Sebastian, sweetie. Speak to me. I'm your auntie. I might be able to help you. Are you being bullied? Yes, I am. I do hope you're not lying to me. Don't believe a word out of Sebastian's mouth, Andy Ivy. He is lying to you. He told me he was being bullied. That is the lie. He's not the one being bullied. He was the one doing the bullying. Poppy. I can't believe you'd rat me out like that. I thought my sister would have my back. Normally, I would, but after what I saw you doing today, I'm defending your victim. But I'm the victim in this. Before you go any further, Poppy, exactly what was it you saw Sebastian doing to another child? Well, I saw him with another child pinned to a wall, threatening to do him and if he didn't give him his snack money. You, mister, are in very big trouble. But mom, that's not... Oh no you don't. You've already lied to me about this. Don't you dare lie to your mother as well. Not only that, but he's also lied to me. His own sister. You are going to owe your poor sister the most sincere apology when this is over. But. No buts, mister. How dare you bully another child at school, and then come home acting the victim. That's very naughty. I would have never believed it. My own son, a bully? How could you do such a cruel and horrible thing? I, uh. That is not the right attitude. You have been a very naughty boy. Bullying another child for money, and upsetting your sister over it. I will not raise my son to be a dirty no good rotten bully. And to show you this behavior won't be tolerated, I am going to have to punish you. No please. There's no getting out of this one. You deserve it. As of this moment, you are grounded until further notice. That means no sleepover for you this weekend, or any social events of any kind. Full stop. Your pocket money will be stopped during that time, and you will go to bed, as soon as come home from school. Assuming that is. They don't expel you for what you've done. You will have to attend medical checkups and examinations, but other than that, no leaving the house. I'll be here to look after you while your mom's at work, and you will behave. I will be telling your father about this. Now get to your room and change into your pajamas. 
It's bedtime for you. I should go and check on my poor daughter. See if she's okay. You do that, and I'll go and sort my naughty nephew out. See you in a bit. Okay, and don't forget he still has a nappy on at night. I'll put his nighttime nappy on him, don't worry. Sebastian seems a bit too quiet. Hey, Bobby. Oh, Sebastian, you're naughty. Why? You wet your pants. That's naughty, Sebastian. Sebastian, what is that on your trousers? He wet himself, Mom. Sebastian, you are a very naughty and disgusting boy. How dare you wet yourself? You know perfectly well big boys use the toilet, they don't wet their pants. It was an accident. Wetting yourself at your age is not an accident. It is pure laziness and it will not be tolerated. You are nearly six. But mom. No buts mister. I'm afraid you'll have to wear nappies until further notice. But. Enough. It's nappies for you, and that's final. So let's go and get you cleaned up, and then it's into a nappy for you. Naughty boy. And so he climbed to the top of a really tall tower, and crowed like a cockerel, and everyone woke up. I'm sorry Sebastian, but that's just not logical. No normal person gets up that early in the morning anymore. It's not done. You're wrong about that. Farmers do, and they always have. No Sebastian. They haven't done that since about 20 years ago. You're wrong again. I hope you two aren't arguing again. You're naughty if you are. Not arguing. Just having a debate. What are you debating about? Sebastian thinks people still get up at daybreak. I know some people do. I'm telling you you're wrong. People haven't got up at daybreak in about 20 years. What about farmers? Nobody's farmed in 25 years now, Sebastian. It's all done with self-running machines nowadays. Then why does a cock still crow? It doesn't. Farmers stopped waking up to the cock's crow 30 years ago. Before mom was even born. Thank you, Poppy. However, I think I've heard quite enough of this debate. You both have opposing views on the matter. If you can't agree, then just agree to disagree. But that's like admitting I'm wrong. Yeah, that's because you are. You both heard what your mother said. Let's not have any more of that. We need to separate you two before this disagreement turns into an argument. You're wrong. Auntie Ivy. I see a naughty boy who is going to go inside and sit in time out for criticizing his auntie. Go on, Sebastian. In you go. Time out. Five minutes. What am I going to do? I need to run out and do some errands. You can come along if you like. Okay. That sounds fun. And I'll go in and watch Sebastian.